What's an invoice? Why is it important? What does it even look like? You'll find the answers to all of these questions in this video. Hey viewers, I'm James and welcome to Accounting Stuff, the channel that teaches you all there is to know about accounting and bookkeeping. If that's your thing, then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on all of the new videos. And don't forget to check out the playlist up here for more accounting basics. In today's video, we're going to talk invoices. You'll find out what invoices are, why they're important, and I'll talk you through the key features with an example. Don't forget to watch this video through until the end because I'll be answering some common questions that'll make this whole topic seem a lot clearer. Invoicing is an essential part of any business, whether you're working for yourself or for a corporation. If you wanna get paid, you've got to know what an invoice is and how to use it. So what is an invoice? Let me explain. A normal business transaction involves two parties, a buyer and a seller. The seller provides goods or services to the buyer and in return, they want to get paid. This is a transaction, so that's the whole point. So the buyer owes money to the seller. But how much exactly? And what specifically are they paying for? And how long do they have to make the payment? To answer all of these questions, the seller sends them an invoice which sets out all of this information. So the buyer knows what they owe, they've got an itemized list of all of the goods and services that they're paying for, and they know the terms of the transaction. They're happy, so they send the money to the supplier and the transaction's complete. I've got bills. I've got to pay. <laughs> bills and invoices are actually the same thing. They relate to the document that is sent to the buyer to request the payment for the goods and services that have been provided by the seller. Great, so now we've got a feel for what invoices are. But why are they important? Well, for starters, and we've touched on this already, Sellers want to get paid, so it's important to them that invoices are sent out as early as possible so they're not waiting around for that cash. The government is also keen on invoices. Most countries charge some form of sales tax on transactions involving taxable goods and services. GST, VAT, state or provincial tax, you might have heard of some of these. An invoice is a record of a transaction that splits out and identifies the sales tax. So they're actually required by law for transactions involving registered businesses. If you'd like to know the specifics, then I recommend you check out your local tax authority's website. From an accounting point of view, invoices are also important because they trigger the accounting entries in the books of both the buyer and the seller. They're used to track accounts receivable and accounts payable. So we know what invoices are and we know that they're important, but what are they actually look like. Let's create one and find out. There are plenty of ways to make invoices. Google Sheets actually has a built-in invoice template if you need to fire one off quickly. But if you want to be more organized and have the ability to track payments and make reports, then I recommend you use some sort of cloud accounting software like QuickBooks Online, Xero, or FreshBooks. I'll link to all of these down below. Here we've got an invoice that I've thrown together using the sample company from QuickBooks Online. This is a very typical invoice layout, so it's a great place for us to start and run through all of the key features. First of all, we've got the names and addresses of both the buyer and the seller. Who's this transaction between? Well, in this example, we've got Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, selling to cool cars. And on the other side, we've got the invoice number, 1038. This is a unique number that identifies the invoice. Usually invoice numbers are sequential, so the next invoice raised by this company would most likely be 1039. Below that, we have the invoice date, in this case, it's the 17th of Jan. This is the day that the invoice was created and it's critical to include it because it starts the countdown for when the payment is due from the buyer. And how long have they got? Well, that's determined by the sale terms, which in this case is net 30 days. So the whole payment is due within 30 days of the invoice date. That's a common wait time, but terms can vary depending on what's been agreed. 30 days after the 17th of Jan is the 16th of Feb, which is the due date that we can also see here. Next, we have the description of the goods and services that this invoice relates to. In this case, it appears to be for some kind of custom design work. It's best to be as specific as possible in the invoice description because you don't want to cause any confusion and delay that payment. To the right of the description, we have the quantity, rate, and amount. Here, the service has been provided just once, and the amount per unit was for $350. So in this case, both the amount and the subtotal are for $350. Below that, we've tacked on a sales tax of 8% because the taxable service has been provided. That comes out at $28, and that leaves us with an invoice total, inclusive of tax, of $378. <sighs> Before we wrap up this video, I'd like to answer four common questions that people tend to have when it comes to invoices. Question one, 
When should I invoice? Invoices are most commonly sent out after the goods and services have been provided. However, they can also get sent out before, depending on what's been agreed between the two parties. However, the accounting treatment in each situation is different. Question two, are invoices and sales receipts the same thing? The short answer is no. However, this is confusing because there are a few similarities. Both serve as evidence of a transaction and both are produced by the seller and given to the buyer. However, the key difference is that an invoice is a request for a payment. So it's issued before the payment's been made, whereas a receipt, that's issued after. Question three, what's the difference between a sales invoice and a supplier or a purchase invoice? Well, they're actually the same thing. They're both invoices. The difference in their names depends on your perspective. If you're the seller, then you call it the sales invoice. And if you're the buyer, you'd call it a supplier or a purchase invoice. Finally, question four, is an invoice legally binding? In general, no, they're not. An invoice by itself isn't legally binding. If they were, then what would stop you from just making all the money by just firing out invoices to whoever you want? In order for them to become legally binding, both the buyer and the seller have to agree on the terms. I can't speak for the specifics of your country, but in general, it's important that both sides have evidence of the agreement, at least in email, or better yet, in a signed contract. You don't want to be that person that gets in a situation where the client or customer is refusing to pay because that sucks pretty bad. I hope that helps clear up some of your questions about invoices. If you've got any more, let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching today's video. If you found it useful, give it a like, share it, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. There are new videos every week here on Accounting Stuff. See you next time.